This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, we are back just like Lucha Underground. It is the Lucha Underground podcast. It's the new Lucha Underground podcast from Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is Mayhem Underground, formerly known as the Mid League War. That is right. We remember our roots, even though we are changing the name. That's okay. It's a little bit of an SEO thing going on. Uh, I mean, and there's the, and let, it. Let me let me be clear. Yes, Lucha Lucha won every week. Lucha Lucha won the season for a midweek war, so we moved on from there. Nobody gets Pop TV anymore. You know, I that you know, it's 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 Ring of Honor blue team, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so there's no war. It's just we're just gonna. It's our it's a Lucha appreciation podcast at this point. Um, so you know, we're just gonna go with that. And we thank you everybody joining us and again. You can check us out. We uh, broadcast from Wrestling Mayhem Show's Facebook and uh, Facebook page, and of course you can subscribe to us. This will be part of the Wrestling Mayhem Show master feed. But man, if I see those hits. Uh, bumping on there uh it can definitely graduate to its own in the future as well and if anything has a chance it's probably going to be this show so mad mike of course joining me from Pooh, kipsy new york myself in pittsburgh pa at the sorgatron media studios how you doing mike how, how are you feeling I, how is your uh, how is your post lucha buzz going right now I, I i need to i need to just just relax and What's a nice cup you got there uh, for uh, you guys on audio? Nice it's, lucha looking cup it's there. Damn good to be back there you talking go. about lucha underground. <laughs> I like we, well, like we, you're wearing your Marty, your Marty the Moss shirt. I'm wearing the the lucha libre taco shop from San Diego, which yep. I, I got the weekend. I, I first got to go attend a, a lucha underground show. Uh, you know, we're just representing you know, like in the mood. Uh, uh, Larry got tacos from across the street. Uh, from our Mexican friends here in the neighborhood, you know, it was just, 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 just embracing the lucha, right? Oh, absolutely. You have to. Lucha Underground is more of a lifestyle. Let's, yes. Let's be. Clear. Yes, it's not merely a house party, is it? No, no, no. Lucha house party. That's something different that that's someone else does. That's this is else. this is lucha fucking underground that's right it is and of course <laughs> what would a season premiere or a milestone event in general be without having our good friend uh from uh, lucha underground co-executive producer of lucha underground hot off the set of uh another hot show going on i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say uh chris the joseph joining us once again oh yeah guys i'm so excited to be here i'm excited i love the new show um and uh it's awesome i'm gonna miss the midweek war but i think this is gonna be even better there you go can't wait to talk lucha with you guys i'm so <laughs> super excited about it oh so many things to discuss so many things <laughs> well first of all so so the, the the graphic came out and there was a collective i watched the internet when the announcement of what tonight's match singular was in aztec warfare um yeah. in the new venue uh, you know, we got to introduce, we, we got to see the transition, of course. Um, well, well, first let's, let's talk about the match itself, of course. Uh, uh, uh Aztec Warfare. I, I think it was kind of fun because it, it was kind of a, it, it, to me, it feels like a state of the union for Lucha Underground to kind of establish who's around still or who's new, you know, uh, uh, things like that. I, like, that's kind of how I perceive that. Yeah, I think we wanted to start out as big as humanly possible. Um, and, uh, you know, we thought Aztec Warfare was a good way to start things out. I, I, it was originally kind of scripted to be a complete surprise. If you watch the show, it, it is that way. But the more we started thinking about it, it's like if we didn't put out the Aztec Warfare tonight, we were kidding ourselves. So it was good to put it out, let people know that it's happening. And uh, it's uh, it, it's pretty fun. It's a Lucha Underground staple. And we thought, hey, let's kick this damn thing off. Let's Let's start the season hot. Yeah, it's it's also kind of a good reminder to like, hey, these are all like at least most of the major players on the show. And with of course with Striker and Vampiro, they give a little bit of backstory to everyone. You mix it up with some comedy, you mix it up with some returns, some new people. Like it's really like even if you haven't watched seasons one, two, three one through three, you can hop into this and be fully like, Oh, I can just start here. 
that, and, that, right. and that was actually tested tonight because we had we had Larry here in the studio and he's not entirely caught up and he's kind of feeling a little like oh god there's a lot to get to this point like he's a little like I can't get through a hundred episodes of Lucha <laughs> Underground right like it just seems impossible to him no matter how much he loves it plus he discovered New Japan lately um, so 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 you know I'm kind of giving him jumping on points and everything and that was the perfect thing for him to see Willie Mack because I was he didn't know who Willie Mack was and I was kind of explaining it to him he, he would always catch like the first few episodes on Netflix. Netflix, and I think that's as far as he got, right? Um, and I told him, check out, you know, Ultima Lucha from last year. Uh, and actually, probably you should just watch all the Ultima Luchas. That probably set him up in general for all the big plot sure. points going into this, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially with the recaps and all that stuff, you can get caught up. And I agree. This is a, definitely a good place to start. It was kind of a restart and a new temple. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. It was a good place to, and, and a good thing, like you guys are saying, to introduce new players and new characters into this world. Uh, as well as kind of remind you of some of the old ones and make you wonder, hey, where are the other ones that are missing? So that's that's good. Who do we leave in Boyle Heights? Who's standing in an empty temple wondering, like, hey, hey, guys, is there a show? Guys, I just, well, I just want to know if Rey Mysterio is still chained up. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I'm real curious. I believe so. You know, unless something happened to him. So yeah, maybe you'll find out in this season. <laughs> I don't know who this imposter is that's going around with his mask lately, but he's not nearly as nice as the Ray Mysterio I remember. That's so Juan Cena. that's one Cena. That's who that is. That's who? That's one Cena? It's one Cena. <laughs> so you were talking about it a little bit beforehand. Oh, go ahead. It's Dominic. He killed and he killed his own father. Oh, and took his power. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, technically, well, is it is it still his father? Like isn't Eddie really his father or is that for, is that still part of? Oh the no, the ladder match. So I'm <laughs> oh, 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 he's got custody. That's right. Yeah, that's right. right. That's what <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, Chris, we were talking a little bit about that Aztec warfare match beforehand, and and kind of, I mean, that's you know, much like uh, you know, Royal Rumble is a, is a pretty big undertaking. You're, you're adding a Royal Rumble plus other elements of a match in something like this. Uh, and we talked yeah. about before about those complexities. Uh, how was it here for, for, you know, doing it, you know, to get the new vibe for the new season here? I, I think it was good. Uh, there were some things that, you know, I would like, if you could go back in time, I would uh, change some things. I mean, we were in a, it was our first episode. We also shot another episode the same day. We haven't done TV in quite some time. Oh, I think over a year at this point. So, you know, it was a little rusty with the cameras and everybody was just kind of a little rusty, but you know, I'm happy with it. I think we can always do better, but, and I will promise you this, that the season will continue to get better and crazier. And even just from that launching point. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm happy. It was, it's a big undertaking to do, especially when you're doing multiple episode tapings in a weekend to try to pull that off, especially as your first one. So next time I know that I'm just going to have to, just probably I would like to keep that just as its own day if I can, if I have the money to do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and the time. It's just a lot of moving pieces. And, um, you know, a pizza man shows up and just delivers a pizza in the middle of it. I didn't see that coming. And you know, so. uh, who, who was that pizza man? Like, I, I, I thought for a second that that guy was going to enter the ring and he was going to be a wrestler. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I can't reveal his true identity. I can't reveal his true identity, but he's a masked wrestler. Uh, oh. who, who's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I, when Vinny didn't pay him for pizza, I thought he was going to like hop on the ring and just leapfrog into Vinny. He just happened to be in town, and he asked me, he's like, uh, if he could be on the show. And I was like, sure. <laughs> Let's get you on the show. <laughs> Oh God! Why not? And, and by the way, while while we're on the topic of Amy Masaro, um, yeah. I don't know if you have the ear of the merch people, mm-hmm. but if there's not a, it's not delivery, it's Masaro shirt. What the fuck are we even doing? I agree. I mean, I pushed for a million shirts like like that, but maybe not something of an idea that good and it hasn't come out. So, but hey, if you're listening. Merchandise people, it's not delivery, it's Masaro. And, and if you're not Vinny, put that shirt on wrestling pro, pro wrestling tees like right now. Vinny, <laughs> so he might actually do it. I'd buy it. I'd definitely buy it. Uh-huh. I would. 
<laughs> and Alex Carr says, look out for El Hijo, El Hijo del Pizza. <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's good. I like that. <laughs> oh, oh, why not? Dreams. Calzone. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the Zastic Warfare, we had uh, Tommy Dreamer, Mr. Spectacular. Yes. Daga returning. Yes. Hernandez returning. Yes. And Chavo being reinstated. Yes. Which out of those five was your favorite to see come to Lucha, come come or come back to Lucha Under? Oh gosh. I mean, well, Mission Spectacular, I'm I've been a fan of for a long time. I I I'm a fan. I you, you guys know I have uh, uh I work on Big Brother often, so I've got to meet him through there and we become friendly. So I was excited to see him uh, get a chance. Uh, Jesse's real cool. He's he's a great guy and the quite the character tommy i've known forever so uh i'm like was like super excited that he flew out and, and did the show for us um you know i i started when i started in in wrestling he worked in talent relations and you know we we worked together became good friends so that was cool um gosh chavo i mean chavo's been my friend forever too i was happy to see him come back he looked great um who, who, who am i missing here daga is, was there one more before Daga? The Hernandez. 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 Oh, who? Hernandez. Oh, Hernandez. Yes, it was great to have Hernandez back. That's uh, that 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 was fun because we really missed him since he was a great part of the season one. And um, you know, all the drama aside, uh, I've I've remained friends with <laughs> with Sean, and you know, he wants to be on the show, and we love him, and uh, we're happy to have him back. But for me. I'm happy that Daga is back, especially after cutting off uh, Lord Pindar's head. Uh, that now he's he's back. He's ready. He's the he's the king of the reptiles, and uh, it's good to have him back. Man, he's one hell of a wrestler. So it's ex- I'm I'm super excited to have him and, and to see what he can do. And um, yeah, he he's gonna he's that guy's amazing. Uh. Yeah, it, it was just really good to see Daga. Like, I freaked. Like, cause I thought I saw Cobra Moon come out. I'm like, oh, cool, Cobra Moon. And then she just had the reveal of Daga behind her. I'm like, oh, man, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Dreamer, boy, he doesn't mess around on his first uh, his first introduction. I, I think that, that, that brought the first, uh, uh, Mike, I think that brought the first all caps tweet of the night. When he yeah. brought, when he when he brought out the thumbtacks, well, it wasn't just that he brought thumbtacks; it's that he put them on the bleachers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> only to, only to know that he's going to end up on those thumbtacks somehow oh. on those bleachers. Of course, I. Wow. Oh man, how did the believers react to that? Like, oh, oh, they loved it. I mean, that was like the real first like slice of violence in the match. So mm-hmm. they went nuts. Mm-hmm. As soon as he pulled those tacks out, they went crazy. I mean, it was like deafening in there. So, uh, yeah, they they were they were thirsty for blood, and that was the that was the, their first taste of it. You know, and it was it was kind of interesting because all through the match, I kept seeing like this red mark in the ring, and I and I I, I think I tweeted at one point, uh, "No blood, just pizza stains on the on the uh, mattress." <laughs> yeah, time. It was kind of like a little pepperoni here, yeah. some sauce. Yeah, it, like yeah. if you if you tuned in a little late to this episode, it's you'd be seeing the man. I'm like, oh god, what happened earlier in this show? You know, <laughs> like I'm like who like somebody must have really got it right. So. <laughs> So, yep, the pizza got color everywhere. Yes, <laughs> that's how you get around that. <laughs> that's great. Uh, but red, red mixed green peppers that's what I've heard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, so uh, I, I was, I was a little worried. I didn't know if you guys were going to really kill Dario Cueto. Yeah, we really, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it certainly seems that way. Now, it certainly does seem that way. <laughs> oh, oh, you, I, I'm trying to get something. Because <laughs> so, uh, Antonio Cueto, he, he seems like an interesting character. He, he's seems yes, very... he, he's definitely different than his son. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think he likes his son very much. Uh, if you couldn't tell by his ten bell salute treatment of his son, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> he he's not a fan uh, of of uh, 
of his baby boy. Of, yeah, of Mrs. Cueto's baby boy. <laughs> Mrs. Qu- Are we ever going to see Mrs. Cueto? I mean, maybe maybe in a flashback uh, at some point, but we'll see. Oh, so, oh, oh man, I, I hope the family resemblance <laughs> will be just as uncanny. In a time travel episode, who knows? You know, we'll see. <laughs> I just wanted to be Vicky Guerrero. <laughs> that's hilarious or like, or like if you do a flashback just have it be Shaw that's great that's great <laughs> oh man uh, uh, but yeah I, I, I like that he has a penchant for uh, it seems like black bulls instead of a red bull I was looking at his yeah. cane very, very, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah his cane is a is a wooden bull and um, um, here wait, hold on hold on Wait, Wait, does no. he have the cane? Oh man! Right there we go. Oh man! Oh. <laughs> oh, we, I got one of the canes. I got one of them. So, yeah, that, the, the bull. Oh, that awesome. okay? Yep, yep. Well, I, 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 I wanted this afterwards as a little memento, just because it's uh, so cool. It's got a bull. Family, family thing. You know? That's some fine craftsmanship right there. Yes. Straight from the internet. Uh, <laughs> I, think it, I, I think this thing was made in like uh, Romania or something like that. We had it sent. Pretty wild. <laughs> I never knew that bulls were big things in Romania. But, yeah. oh. Canes must be. Hey, you learn, you learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... So, Antonio Cueto ordered it on Dario. That that's what he said. Wow that that was a shocker to me. It was that was a shocker because he like I was thinking like at the end of season three and this like we're gonna get Antonio Cueto come back. He's gonna be like the renegade runner of the temple, like trying to get revenge. And no, no, not so much. <laughs> no, he, yeah, and the best part is he that Dario had to call him. Call him for help. The only the 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 guy who ordered the hit to kill him. <laughs> oh man, that that's, seems about right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's just you know family Although, stuff. I wish you had told us when the services for Dario were. Uh, we would have sent flowers. Yeah, only two people showed up. You yeah, know, we would have sent flowers. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Antonio would get great, but I, I love El Hefe. That's uh, that's our fault for not getting uh, uh, Los Angeles uh, newspapers to uh, uh, get the get the listings. That's on yeah, us. That's yeah, on us. Did, yeah, did not go out. Yeah, wow. yeah, it was tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, so uh, it, it's interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in that, like, oh, I don't know about this new character mode with him so far. I, okay. I, I'm waiting for him to grow on me, you know, but yeah, much yeah. like, I'm just like, you know what? There was a lot of weird stuff at the beginning of Lucha Underground, but like Dario was like, oh, what's this guy about? He kind of grows on you after episode and episode. So I'm giving him a chance to see what yeah, happens give him with a, them. Give, give him a chance and you'll get to see kind of his side of the story and okay. his his inner workings and who he's connected with mm-hmm. and and uh, the decisions that he makes uh for his family and for the world <laughs> um i want i want to mention another return i noticed tonight vampiro's hair came back this season uh, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's some shout-out. laughs> Like, like all this stuff is happening. These big, great revelations. Then we get a shot at the commentator's booth, and I was like, "Whoa!" Um, also, I'm having trouble. Like, it's I, I, I'm, you know, I had this problem before, and, and again, like going to the temple, you kind of it, it all kind of comes together in your head, like that context of where things are in that temple. Like, I can't yeah. figure out where the commentary is. The commentary is right. It's basically on the same side as it used to be. It's on okay. the left of the of the staircase. Mm-hmm. But the band now is above the commentators behind them. And and okay. the office is behind the commentators. Okay. So, so like everything's yeah. like bunched up in like one side now. Kind of kind of well, not not really. It's all, it, it, like the office is is on the left hand side of the stairs. And it's kind of like recessed back a little bit. Can the, we the build the, the building portion that we were in? Mm-hmm. It's a lot. The arena portion is a lot smaller than the other one because this this actual arena is a freezer. Yeah, it's a gigantic <laughs> freezer. 
and uh, and then uh, you know, and then all the other places. What do you see? The other places in the temple are crazy and scary, and uh, yeah, it was like it was crazy. I PJ Black said he saw a ghost there. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> oh, perfect. Well, we got a con- we got we got we got opinion from Drago on the bathroom situation last time you were on the Wrestling Mayhem show. So, I mean, if that holds anything, I mean, it, he turned a different color. Like literally, he's turned a different color from it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, speaking of scary and disturbing, yeah, uh, Ricky Munda. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Wow, that is uh, he. We, we missed some stuff, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, he. I, I think a lot of the characters have kind of moved forward, and we'll start to tell how things that happened to them and what happened and how to kind of. I, I, I think that this picks up a little bit after what happened. Okay, I, I'm looking forward to the point where um, well, there's enough episodes out that I can do a super cut of of him and that doll to uh, the creepy doll song by Jonathan Colton. Uh, cause oh. it's, it's got the one eye open and everything. And like they describe it in the song and it's really messing with me right now. I gotta be honest. <laughs> that was actually, it's funny because that is, that was actually an idea that Ricky pitched us in season one. Really? And we, wow. and we, we finally did it in season four. So, yeah. Yeah. But, cause like, uh, as, as a former, uh, slinger of toys, I, yes. I've seen my share of creepy dolls. That one. <laughs> That's no Teddy Ruxpin. You that know? one takes the taco, sir. And by the that way, one... if somebody in Lucha Underground merchandising has any open positions or like a good uh, head on their shoulders, Mad Mike is available for uh, toy slinging experiences. And <laughs> I can literally fill notebooks with ideas for Lucha Underground merch. There you go. Oh, gosh, there you yeah. go. Well, we will ha- have to hire Eric if you're watching. Hire Mad Mike. Yes. <laughs> yes, he's available. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We'll get you. We'll get you hired sooner or later, there, Mike. <laughs> but like, where where did like was that just a doll you guys picked up randomly and doctored it, or was that made? Like, yeah, they uh, our our art department found a doll, and then this like creepy do- talking doll, and then they uh, and then they uh, like from like the fifties or something like that, and then they kind of like re changed it. So we, yeah, so like yeah. For okay. legal purposes and things like that, uh, uh, mutilated it. <laughs> it. It was really like it. It looked like he was almost doing like channeling Al Snow, like talking yeah, to head. Yeah, it yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit like Al Snow, but you, you'll see, you'll see uh, Ricky's character develop a little more and kind of tell the story of of where his doll came from. Did, are, can we know the name of the doll? You will find out the name of the doll. Ah. You, know, but you will find out the name. I love. Ah. I love. This is the most. This is the most like investigative uh, interviewing that I think we do on any of these shows. I, you just stonewall us the whole I, time. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this doll. This isn't the first time that this that the idea of this doll has been in Lucha Underground. It's been in an episode before. So oh. if you, if you can go back in time. Uh, and and watch uh, your old episodes of Lucha Underground, you'll see that it was already we 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 put a little hint of it a while back. Oh, I can't uh, wait to see the doll theory. I'm gonna have to go watch all Netflix now. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, just yeah. all those yeah. numbers. Man, oh, I'm too bad. Rollins, I hope you're watching. You're better at the investigative journalism than I am. Yes, so. he is. Yes, she is. Um, awesome. Uh, by the way, some props. Uh, we had uh, our friend who, who does a little bit of prop work here in Pittsburgh. He got to see. He, uh, every week, just just hates and hates on the Bludgeon Brothers uh, masks uh, when they come out on mm. SmackDown every week. Uh, yeah. Uh, when when uh, uh, the Snake Tribe came out tonight, and I showed him, because um, it looked like he got a new mask. Um, oh, oh Vibra? Uh, yeah. yeah, Vimra. Uh, yes. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I and I showed him the old ones for the Snake Tribe too. And uh, you got the thumbs up from our local prop person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had, yeah, we had to make some a little few changes to it because it was a little hard for him to see. Yeah, and, and yeah, he, he, for he was definitely and, uh, less slee stack this season. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it was hard. It was hard for him to breathe, so we had to make some changes to it. But uh, yeah, Luchasaurus is awesome. And, and it looked like. It looked like you could see the sides of his mouth moving, like it was a full jaw. Mm-hmm. I yeah. really approved of that. I'm like, oh, clever girl, <laughs> clever girl. 
<laughs> you could say that the snake tribe has evolved this season. Yes, yes, yes. They've they've definitely well, evolved. Yes. And you know, it makes sense because snakes shed their skin all the time. So of course. Just They're always changing. That's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> um now, now I did have one more question about Antonio Cueto. Okay. Um I noticed he had two different color eyes. Yes, yes, yes. Are are we going to find out why that is, or if uh, there is a you, I, I think you will find out why eventually. But yeah, there is a reason why why one eye is is wrong, and, and uh, he has a little scar. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is he a white? Uh, is he a white he looks like one. <laughs> Sometimes in some in some parts of the season, he looks a little more like a white walker than he does now. But uh, yeah, <laughs> depending on the day. Okay. But uh, yeah, he's uh, yeah he he has one bad eye. Oh, oh man. Mm, okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to try and figure this or out. Or maybe it's a good eye. I don't know. Yeah, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a replaceable uh, eye. Maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> no. We can't bring last action hero into this. I was thinking the I was thinking Thor in the in Avengers. Uh, spoiler alert. That's that's right. That's right. So, sorry. Sorry. Sorry if anybody hasn't seen that yet. You should you should have by now. Nerd cards. So so um <laughs> As far as like, it seemed like uh, Mill was a little overtaken by everyone else in the ring, and Katrina didn't seem too pleased about that. Is oh, that also, wait, 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 wait? I want to roll back, Katrina. Yeah. So I, 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 I had had a revolution on, on on Katrina. We had, you know, uh, we had Katrina. We had Business Bangs season. Uh, Katrina when she took over and had a new hairstyle. Um, Got about business banks. What's that? Got oh, about business. Oh, I miss business. That's my favorite. That's my all favorite business. Katrina. Um, I just, I just figured she's uh, no pants Katrina this this season. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, Johnny really set the precedent for that. There's mm. no. Yes. No yeah, time for pants. No time. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. There's no time for pants. No well, time that, for pants. That just makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead with your uh, important question. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, I noticed that Katrina looked at all the gifts when uh, Mill got eliminated so early. Was that just like an emotional, like in the moment reaction, or is that going to maybe lead to something? Uh, I think it could maybe lead lead to something. You'll have stuff to watch and find out. I mean, Katrina has uh, has constantly said, and if you remember in the last season, she talked about uh, you know who sh- who she's truly in love with, and um, we're going to find out. Yeah, and it's not Mill, and it wasn't Jeremiah either, right? I mean, you can form your own conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna find that out, though. Okay. Uh, I, I do. I do love that um, Marty was the last guy in there at Pentagon. Yeah, great. I, I thought. I thought that was like, it was weird to almost see Marty get a face reaction to. Mm. Yeah, Very, yeah, for sure. Especially since he's so despised and disgusting, you know. Oh so, yeah. yeah that's... <laughs> I mean, yeah. But, like, you know what? Somehow it works. I mean, I'm even repping Mario the Mall. Yeah. I, I just put this on randomly before I went to watch the show. I'm like, oh my god, if he wins, that'd be awesome. It would be. It would have been awesome. But hey, he made it to the end, which is good. Final two. Final yeah. two. He did get his arm broken, so uh, you know, poor Marty. Oh, Moth's repair arms very very yeah. quick i mean his wing broken sorry yeah of course this, <laughs> it's okay. he never really knew how like wings worked anyway so I, I, he'll be fine i think him seeing yeah. him seeing him mending and and sulking and or i don't maybe not even sulking with that with that on the mend i think it'd be very interesting uh we do we do have some comments from the chat room i want to get out there oh, uh, cool. for you guys um first of all alex miller out there out there i think in your neck of the woods uh, he says, uh, if there is a season five, can you guys get Nick Gage? <laughs> Are you aware of Nick Gage? <laughs> what, Nick Cage? No, no, Nick. No. no, we made this mistake last night. No, uh, Nick well, Gage. I will accept both. Okay, yeah. I would love that. I would oh, love to have Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nick Gage is a, um, I've seen him in person up in Cleveland, and he's a scary, scary individual. He has, uh, he, he has done time. Was he, was, did he kill somebody? Like legitimately, maybe. I don't think so. He I probably don't, wouldn't be nearly. I'm sure it was like like Gosh. assault or something. Um, it sounds perfect for the temple. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to add much story to him, uh, really. Um, just, just really, really, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Just shoot really, storyline with this guy. Yeah, you just come. Go, go look up. Go look up Nick Gage and and get back to us on on your impressions of him, please. I, I will. I will look up Nick Gage and then I will look up Nick Cage too. <laughs> That's for fun. Just watch Face Off again. Yeah, of course. You wanted a place to bring in Nick Cage. Yeah. I'm just saying, he already exists in Robert Rodriguez's universe. Mm. I'm just saying, he can be the leader of the Black Lotus tribe. Oh, I love that. That's hey, cool. we were. There you go. There you go. I'm gonna. Don't charge me for that one, Mad Mike. Don't charge me. Oh, oh no, no, no. Creepy. Never, never. <laughs> um, uh, also, oh, I had another one here. I'm so sorry. Oh, armed robbery is what he went to jail for. Uh, oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Alex, nice. for putting that in there. Uh, Alexander Carr is out there in Long Beach. Actually, has a conspiracy theory that the eye has the power of the gods. Ooh, mm-hmm. that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think it's Ooh. one of the Gauntlet Infinity Stones, uh, whatever we're calling those <laughs> in Lucha Underground, uh, myself. So. <laughs> I just, you know, it's just going to get ripped off of his out of his face at some point because that's how we roll on Lucha. Uh, yeah. And thank you for, for having parts of the head squish scene in, in the uh, introduction uh, flashbacks uh, to this episode to remind us where this show goes. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. No problem. <laughs> yeah, that was, oh, man. Because there were so many people that weren't on tonight out, like, Oh, we're still missing a lot of moving parts. Yeah, like, yeah. There, are, there are there are a lot of moving parts, and uh, yeah, yeah, there are there are people that are missing. There are people that are missing in action. Mm-hmm. There are uh, just 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 wandering yeah. around the old temple, wondering where everybody's at. Yeah, there's uh, there's there's lots going on, but you'll see some more people pop up. You'll see some new faces pop up. Mm. Like this thing's just getting rolling. Now there was a comment. Somebody's very excited to see what Chelsea Green is going to be doing with you guys out there. Um, I think ah, I think I, I think I saw a name listing for her, but I don't know if that falls was, under anything. So I don't, I'm not going to say it, but I'm very curious. I, well, I mean, everybody kind of knows she's going to be know. on the show. Awesome. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the, um, that little uh, montage of the yeah uh, the the opening uh, the trailer. She's yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. She's That's right. There. That's right. Oh yeah, she's perfect for Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. Perfect for Lucha Underground. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> all right uh any other uh, uh, mike mike i want yeah. you to ask uh chris the most burning question you have about uh season four here before we let him go oh fuck put me on the spot sorg um uh, come on mike go for it is dario really dead because i don't believe it i don't fucking believe it yeah, he was he was looked dead in the episode. Hey, you know what? I I've seen Batman under the red hood. I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> they put a dummy in the coffin for the funeral. Mm. I think that it, it's possible. I didn't see anyone check for a pulse. I just saw someone that looked like Dario Cueto lying in a box. That's uh, that, seen. Yeah, that was Dario Cueto in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Okay. Does he stay dead? He's dead. Like okay. <laughs> He's the you asked the wrong question, Mike. You <laughs> is is the does he stay dead question. <laughs> Three times at this point. And does he come back? And then he does I mean, the, Good. Yeah, yeah, I mean anything's possible in the gender ground, but I'm, He's, he's dead. Does he? Okay. The, no, the question is: Does he come back and become like a cross between Mil Martes and, and Matanza? That's the question <laughs> you're supposed to ask. That is the pointed question you're supposed to ask because that's what could completely happen in this universe. So. I'll tell you. I'll tell you this: He won't be the first person to be dead this season. That's for sure. <laughs> he will not. Be the first there's a there's a lot that's, more. That's that's a given, right? I mean, oh, <laughs> that's coming from the How we, question is. Who else is going to die? Has Cap- anybody Ooh. done a death head count um, from <laughs> from the seasons so far by chance? No, but do you know? Somebody should. You know? Somebody should. Where's that super oh, fan page? Where's Where's our, our cagematch.net that gives us like all these weird t- tidbits about? Oh, Luch there Underground? was there was one um, episode where you guys had like 
presumed dead, missing, like the the board, yeah. uh, Hernandez is missing and now he's not yeah. missing anymore. Are we are we gonna find out where he was? Uh, eventually, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if he comes back again. Oh, I'm, mm. I'm, 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 people die just so we can like count them off. Like <laughs> You're even gonna find out. Uh, you're gonna find. Yeah, I think. Uh, look, you'll find out in this season about a person who died a long time ago that we, that we'll even kind of talk about that has some influence on somebody. So you'll you'll see. Ooh. Are we well, gonna? Please, is it gonna be justice for Mister Cisco? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mister Cisco. I was, I was gonna say, are we gonna see or hear about Big Rick? Maybe, maybe Big Rick, maybe Bale. <laughs> I mean, there's, 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 I mean, who, who else is dead? Um, oh, Pindar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to get the last couple from the chat here. First of all, let's give you guys a chance to make Lucha Underground some money. Where do you get the Lucha scarf people were wearing in the audience? And does it really get that oh, cold uh, in LA for a scarf? No, you, well, I mean, gosh, we're in an ice house. And it was kind of cold in there, oh. to be honest with you. Oh, which is kind of fun part of the scarf. And the other thing is uh, we were thinking like, oh, you know, like the World Cup is going to be airing around the same time. So it'd be fun to have like kind of soccer scarves and stuff like that. So nice. that's a little bit part of it. So, yes, I think you can get them uh, either on eBay, uh, through our eBay thing or through our website, uh, reachunderground.com. One of those things, you, I think you should be able to get it. I hope. Nice. Um, like, I, don't even ha- I don't even have one. I forgot to get one because uh, at the wrap <laughs> party, I, I, I was like, so tired from working, I just I just got a bottle of Jameson and had a good time by myself. <laughs> but but you got the cane. You got the you got the cane, right? So. Huh? Yeah, I do have the cane. Uh, the most important piece. There you the go. Alex Miller um, uh, also uh, is asking: Is the reason Dante Fox went MIA is because he went back to war? That's a possibility. That is a I mean, good that's possibility. So, soldiers go off to war often. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I guess. Yeah. duty. That's why he's he is missing in action. Maybe he's up to something. Maybe he's doing. He's on a mission. You'll have to see. There you go. Um. Um. <laughs> um uh, wait, 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 wait. One. Uh, oh, I, okay. That's a logistical question. Okay. That's completely logistical. It's not to do with or anything like that. Um. Why did you guys decide on the red and blue theme for the ropes? You mean the blue and yellow? Uh, blue, blue, and yellow, blue and yellow. Sorry, I, I, knew, I meant uh, that was like kind of an art department decision. Originally, all the robes were yellow and like looked a little too much like NXT, and then mm. uh, and then we did the blue and yellow because we thought it fit kind of with the theme of like the cold colors and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, I, it's like old WCW colors, so I kind of was like, hey, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I feel like that, or yeah, Georgia South, <laughs> you know, or <laughs> yeah. or like some of the lucha promotions kind of have that kind of color scheme too, right? Yeah, plus so, yeah, and plus we plus we wanted it to look a little different from mm-hmm. from the other the genre. So yeah, yeah. Okay, I was just wondering if, like, if it was just a like you wanted it to look different. Yeah, Kemper. we definitely we definitely wanted it to look different. So that was part of it. I mean, we could have made the ropes any color, but yeah, we thought those looked okay. different. Awesome. Oh, and uh, is Pentagon doing a campaign for Lucha Underground, Cerro Modelo? Because he really should. <laughs> He should. That's another great, he great really idea. Should. He really great should. Idea. Oh, great I did. Idea. I missed the commercial. Like I half yeah, saw it. There was the Modelo commercial. I, yes, I was I know, waiting I know for that. him to pop up because I tweeted about it. I'm like, oh, it'd be really fun because he entered right by the Modelo sign. I'm like, if he just says Cero Modelo, like. Was I the Modelo be- commercial with Antonio? I believe so, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who else was yeah. in it? I, I I missed like somebody asked me like, who it was and I looked away. Oh no, it, it was um it was uh, El Spiritu de Lucha Libre, which is like Modelo's like guy. He's like he's like he's like a Modelo. Oh okay. Like, uh, oh, okay, so he, so he's like, he's like a he's like a luchador Spuds McKenzie, basically like a mascot. <laughs> I really hope so. Is this like so? This is the lucha version of when they had the weird anime cat come out at New Japan a couple years ago at Wrestle Kingdom, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and we tried to make the commercials kind of like almost like little vignettes. So, yeah. so they kind of tied in. So you think so you think you're you're watching the show and you're seeing commercial. You're, you're watching thing about Modelo, and at the same time you're Genius. in in the temple. Yeah. Can you drop <laughs> us a last last uh, I think it was last season? You 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 dropped us a hint, which we think led to the, the um the war uh match. 
the uh, okay. hell, of hell of war match is there yeah. any yeah. is there any last uh 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 watch out for this thing that you want to drop us um, to, to burn watch. us with the intermission anticipation in, in so much I, more. I, this, this dog needs a chew toy. I, I, need, <laughs> I, need, I need to gnaw on for 21 more weeks to figure out. <laughs> I think that one of the things is we probably shot maybe our most epic fight scene ever uh, this season, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, okay. That mm. I would watch out for. The end of the season will be violent, bloody, and horrifying. Um, <laughs> so, geez. standard Lucha under. <laughs> and the cameos will keep getting crazier and and and, and bigger and, and, uh, and lots of fun. Awesome. Um, That's for sure. Yep. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I, uh, I, I guess I could say that. That's cool. And uh, yeah, get ready for right next week. Matanza versus Pentagon. Yeah, uh, that, that's, a, that's a jump up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's a big one. And, and then uh, then the week after that is even crazier again. We just, nice. we just go big, big main event, big main event, big main event, big main event. They're coming. Uh, uh, lastly, 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 for real this time, um, we actually got to uh, run into a uh, guy that resembles somebody on uh, uh, Lucha Underground, Jeff Cobb, this past weekend at uh, Super Indie. Our buddy, our buddy mm-hmm. uh, Bobby F. J. Town actually got to go have a conversation with him. <laughs> Um, and, uh, we, we found out that Jeff Cobb loves turtles because Bobby had his, uh, turtle, uh, puppet. Um, Oh yes. So I, we're, we're trying to figure out, we were trying on the show last night to figure out like uh, some kind of turtle Matanza angle here. Like just Matanza just has a puppet, you know, for some reason it seems like it, you know, Hey, he's been in that cage for a while. I don't know. Uh, a pet turtle. A pet tur- that's great. I love that. And then maybe he could like, I don't know, pour some kind of uh, radioactive stuff on it. And then we have one of those Ninja Turtle wrestlers and oh. uh, just like in Mexico. How is El- yes. how is El Rey's relationship with Nickelodeon? Are you guys a parent <laughs> company? I, I I forget who owns you. As long as Leonardo comes, I'll be happy. There you I, go. He's my there you go. <laughs> you got me. Now, damn it! I just want Vinny, to- Vinny, yeah yeah. Or or it could be Michelangelo. <laughs> He can steal Vinny's pizza and Drago's nunchucks. I'm really high on this. I just read Batman Ninja Turtles, so I'm really high on this crossover right now, <laughs> and by the, the way. The sword and, oh, man, we we really have the whole thing going on. Oh, Matanza becomes a snapping turtle. Though, there you go for your Lucha Comics next uh, next up. Yeah. You know. I'm, I'm gonna, oh, let me jot that down real quick. Okay, got it. There you go. What's up, Image? Or whoever is doing Ninja Turtles now. Uh <laughs> Well, all right thank you so chris it's always an awesome to have you on uh, uh really helping uh, uh, uh having so much fun with this uh and it's such a great show uh congrats again on, on season four premiering tonight the buzz like my feed was just exploded with lucha underground on twitter tonight uh so it's cool to see that happening on wednesday nights again and yeah it, w- it was crazy you know when like when like people are tweeting about other things but still hashtag lucha underground that the shows uh, a lot of people are talking about it that's the way i always <laughs> <laughs> when people are riding like, along with it yeah, yeah if, like, if, like if somebody's trying to sell me like an airplane from china and it has hashtag lucha underground I'm like okay this might be we might be doing okay somebody, yeah, somebody, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting. Thank you guys for having me. Congratulations on your new show. And I look forward to coming back uh, and talking with you guys again. And I, I definitely look forward to following you guys, watching your shows, following you on Twitter, and hearing your reactions to everything. Because if anything, I love to see it's it's the crazy reactions, especially Mad Mike's uh, live tweeting. It's amazing. It's amazing. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 went, I went off just tonight. It was I, I can't. I missed it so much. It's been much. too long. It's been too long. It drove me to Impact Wrestling. It's been too long. The weird thing is, it hasn't even been that long for me. I got to see a lot of Lucha guys in April. <laughs> well, you, just, got to, you, uh, you got 20, 21 more weeks to enjoy it, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And then hopefully, uh, hopefully season five will come soon thereafter. Yes. Um. Is, is Before we get, is there any word on uh, season three on Netflix yet? I have not heard anything about that. I had heard that they were working on it, but uh, I'm not sure about that. But uh, hopefully, it happens. It usually, should. usually, usually those there. those seem to happen. Right before, right? Y- yeah, uh, usually yeah. those seem to happen like a f- little bit into new seasons coming out. Like seems yeah. to be the trend okay. at least. 
that okay. I've noticed. So I, I would say kind of look out. For, I, I bet it'll be. I bet my guess would be they'd have it midsummer if it if it follows other trends, right? Because I know there's a lot of big stuff dropping off during the summer mm-hmm. with the Disney yeah. stuff coming and going, uh, and everything like that. So like that's my uninformed guess there so yeah well hopefully it's there i don't know uh mm-hmm. i don't handle that stuff but i hope it comes soon because that would be awesome in the meantime it is on itunes if anybody wants to jump at it actually yes. hot it's tip amazon hot tip um on the xfinity app it looks like they dropped the entire third season uh in the past week on your on demand which is really weird because here in pittsburgh you don't even have the chance to get l ray network yet we get the episodes on demand um, oh, that's awesome. I know Bobby said he used to get them, but they were in Spanish before, and they fixed that since, um, like exclusively in Spanish for some reason. <laughs> so yeah, that <laughs> was a little difficult for some people to try. To, I, I know that's a reason why some of the guys didn't catch on right away when when it started off and started building steam with you guys. Uh, but uh, so there's that. So I would say if you do have a cable provider, if you have an on demand, sometimes it's listed probably. And uh, and and see what's going on there. So there's there's a lot of options out there these days. It, it's a lot easier to get your lucha legitimately um, than than that first season for sure. So <laughs> so and support these guys and 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 uh, hit up yes, the merch. Yes, please. You guys are support all us. Hit, hit, hit up the merch and uh, yeah, drink a Modelo. And if you do, say, oh, I did it because I saw it on Lucha Underground. There you Tweet go. Them. Everything. Hit the uh, the no, you guys are on prowrestlingtees.com uh, now with t shirts. We got stuff on there too for Wrestling Mayhem Show. So while you're there, uh, and uh, and uh, I, I'd say tweet Hot Topics because they really like cool wrestling merch these days. So uh, oh, you know, get you yeah. guys in there. Actually, that's a really good idea. I'm yeah, search yeah. Tweet, yeah, Hot Topics. I mean, a lot of some... guys, Joey Ryan's got a shirt in there. I'm just saying. Hey, I mean, I mean, I can, Joey I... Ryan has a shirt everywhere. Yeah. He's amazing. Man, that dude's a hustler. I love it. <laughs> Uh, all right thank you chris anything else you want to throw out there any, any non-lucia stuff you got going on here that people should be checking uh, out no, no not really i mean uh yeah i will say hey, what's big brother this summer it's a cool show i like it a lot uh chris roach who uh writes lucha underground with me he is uh, a big executive producer of it and he does an awesome job so watch that with him uh and when his movie truth or dare uh comes out uh on, on blu-ray or whatever blumhouse's truth or dare buy it or watch it or Rented. <laughs> so I'll plug for, for Chris Roach since I don't have anything else going on. There you go. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Sounds good. Mad Mike, for, Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter. And of course, he's doing the live tweets a lot of times. I love there was oh, a lot yeah. of yelling about Raw after I went to bed on Monday oh, night. Oh, yeah. When you yeah. I, up. I, well, I, had to get, I had to get back in the swing of live yeah. tweeting. Yeah. So I live tweeted Raw. That was a terrible mistake. That hurt. That hurt you. Uh, it looks it, like it hurt you, like, like emotionally. Really, but I knew I was doing like, it's like knowing you have to just walk through glass, but at the end of that is just the best thing in the world. And that's Lucha Underground. So yeah. look, look for the hashtag MM, of course, when, when I live tweet for Lucha Underground, because that'll be happening every week again. Yep. And I will be coming up with some crazy, insane theories. I, I, I get the, the, a good one is that I one that, that that was pitched from Long Beach. I like that. Looks good. I like it. that's good. There you go. And also check out the main Wrestling Mayhem show. We do that every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, subscribe to all the Wrestling Mayhem Show stuff. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, if you like this stuff, uh, you can support us at patreoncom slash show where you oh I put the poster over there could have a chance to win a uh, Blockers uh, movie poster with John Cena on the cover and that guy from suicide squad um and and there was something else i wanted to plug oh yeah if you check out this last episode uh episode 622 kaiju of nxt was the title uh we have a, a good we have a guest uh, one uh, comedian jay cooper is always awesome but of course uh ross berman of the of wrestle zone who covered the cm punk trial I uh, got to chat with us a little bit about covering that and a little bit of New Japan New, uh, Dominion as well because he does the recaps for Russell Zone on that. Uh, so uh, check that out. A really good episode. A lot of fun. Uh, it really lived up to the Mayhem name. Uh, so go check that out. And, of course, if you like this, subscribe to the WMS Super Feed on the audio or uh, like the Wrestling Mayhem Show page so you know when we go live every week and be part of the conversation. Uh, thank you so much, our guest, Krista Joseph. Thank you, Mad Mike. Thank you, our awesome Mayhemers out there in the chat room. We'll see you guys next time on Mayhem Underground. Mayhem Underground. Oh, yes.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.